Hey, it's a Tuesday morning. It's overcast. It's windy. Let's go to work. This is Tuba Billy in the morning. It's uh, I think it's gonna be a good day. I hope. So yesterday, uh, um, when I was heading home, had an incident where uh, my my backpack, which I usually strap on the my back seat, uh, actually fell off. I get, I didn't strap it the same way. I tried a new way, and obviously that doesn't work. But um, I uh, I was just going along, and then. I happened to reach back just to check on it and I didn't feel it and so I reached and reached and reached behind me and then I looked in the rearview mirror and I see it sliding on the road and I was like oh crap um, and so I quickly hit a u-turn went back picked it up um, had to flag down a truck to keep him from running over it And my biggest, my biggest concern was my laptop was in it. And I'm like, oh, I just destroyed my laptop. And I just had, uh, I just had the screen replaced because it dropped uh, a couple months ago, fell off a table. And um, and the screen, the screen just went blank. And uh, so I was like, oh crap, you know, I, I, I can't get it fixed again because I only got a one, like once a year accidental repair forgiveness. And so I was like, ah, oh. but thankfully, 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 it worked. I got home, I turned it on, it worked just fine. I think what had happened so the, the laptop is actually, it's in the pocket closest to my back. And the, um, the part that had all the, the scuffing and road rash on it was the other side. So I guess the outside of it. And so that, I think that, that's what helped it. Um, it just kind of landed and slid. I have a couple uh, cases in there, like... Uh, my GoPro accessory case, which is kind of cushy. I have a hard drive, external hard drive case, which has some give. Got my wallet in there, and um, and yeah. So I think that's what really saved the laptop. I'm very thankful that it didn't get run over, because that would that would really suck. We are open. That is interesting. I wonder what happened to AutoZone. <laughs> oh, high schoolers. Jamming out in the car. So this morning, I'm listening to my cruising jams, and right now is Jimi Hendrix National Anthem. Um, not, not, not today, not today. Too much screaming. Oh. So I don't know why I've got the sniffles. Uh, I do not have coronavirus. And to my knowledge, I have not been exposed to anyone. Um, I think it's just allergies. I mean, it's it's summertime. Things are blooming. And I don't feel any different. I haven't 
lost sense of smell, sense of taste. Uh, at least any more than I normally have gone. Um, my my sinuses and my nose has been messed up really since like 2008. Because um, when we lived in married student housing, right, I mean right after we got married, we lived in married student housing at University of Tennessee. Uh, this is a cinder block building. Um, so, you know, it, it's old, not much insulation, and basically when we moved out, uh, I, I found a huge patch of thick black mold right behind the bed, right next to my head. Um, so I was sleeping inches from just mold. Ever since then, I've had, I've had constant yeah, year-round congestion and just and it, it gets worse seasonally um, I'll get like allergy season I'll get um, I'll get a cough that will just not go away now allergy season happened to be in er, in early spring when coronavirus was also coming so I'm sitting here coughing and coughing and coughing and everybody's kind of looking at me I'm like it, it's allergies I know it's allergies it happens this time every year for the past 12 years so don't even but heading to work today I think it's going to be a good day at least better than yesterday. Monday was, man, Monday was a Monday. It was very interesting and kind of rough. But I'm hopeful for Tuesday. You know, I hope that uh, I hope that this sounds not too bad. Um, I'm I've had one of those little furry dead cat things on my mic on the inside of my helmet but I kept getting it in my mouth and it just it ended up, up my nose it's just not comfortable with it right in my face um, and I've noticed on the videos there's I still get some popping and clicking and so I was like you know what I'm just gonna take it off and I'll see if this video sounds any better um, I, I did get a, a cheaper lapel microphone lavalier and so I may just need to bite the bullet and get get a big one get a you know 40 50 dollar one it's not that I'm a cheapskate it's just that I'm broke <laughs> uh, being being an extension agent doesn't uh, doesn't pay all that well uh, we, we make roughly about the same as teachers um, so, you know, for instance, when I started, my starting salary was 35, 35,000 a year. Uh, at that time, we had uh, two kids. So, you know, family of four for 35,000 a year, uh, and, and that was it. My wife was was staying at home. We we made a decision that that was important for us for the kids to have her at home. And she wanted to do that. She wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. I'm not forcing her or anything. But, um, but yeah, so, you know, money money was kind of tight. Still is. I've gotten some raises since then. I uh, got my master's degree, which was supposed to give me a, a nice raise. Very nice raise. Um, but, at that point, I had gotten, a, you know, a few raises and everything, and uh, so my my uh, overall raise once I got my master's was like 700 bucks a year, which came out, you know, it was like 50 or so dollars a month. Uh, but I also found out at the same time um, there was an error in my taxes. 
and they weren't taking out enough taxes. So when when I do we did our tax return, I owed like six hundred dollars. I was like, well, so I fixed that, and so that adjusted my pay down about seventy dollars a month. So. Finishing my master's degree, which is supposed to give me a very nice raise, my take-home pay actually went down about $70. Figure that one out. Um, it's just it's just one of those things. It's kind of it kind of sucks, but at the same time, now I'm I'm able to um, to go for you know for more promotions. In about four years, I have three years now, I'll uh, I'll be eligible to go up for promotion, which will hopefully be another big jump. Ish jump? I don't know. So my my dad, who also works in extension in a different district, um, he's he's has he has over 30 years. Um, he's also a district director, which means he's 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 like basically administration for the university uh, for the for the northwest portion of Georgia he, he just barely makes over six figures after 30 30 years 30 plus years and climbing the you know climbing the ladder going from being a county agent to a, a program development coordinator which is you know over the you know, certain people in the district over into a district director, which is over everybody in the district. Um, he also has is given other raises and promotions to uh, take on new responsibilities from the associate dean. So, being, being working for extension is not a lucrative um, business. the The associate dean all, always says. Being in extension is a mission. You have to have a missionary mindset. This has to be your mission. You have to be willing to do it for less pay. And you know, for for the most part, yeah. Um, I mean, I enjoy it. It's fun. I get to plan awesome trips for kids, and I get to go and have fun too. And like, that's my job. But at the same time, there's a lot of demand. This is not an eight to five job. It just, it takes and takes and takes. Uh, I had, we had an extension conference last year and the, uh, the keynote speaker was from out of state actually said extension will take everything that you give it. And that really kind of helped me. I was like, you know what? You're right. If you, you know, if you will give extension, it will keep taking and taking and taking until there's nothing left. And so I was like, you know what? I, I can't. I've got four kids now. Um, I've got a wife who's at home with those four kids all the time. And so for, for her sanity and for my sanity, I can't do it all. I am one person. I'm one person, so there's only so much I can do. And I'm not going to, you know, jeopardize my relationship with my wife and my kids for basically a job. It is a job. And so that's that's my that's my mentality. That's my mindset. Yes, I'm going to do my job. I'm going to make sure the work gets done. But I'm not going to be taking on a whole bunch of extra responsibilities because at the end of the day, it's a job. And at the end of the day, the most important thing to me is my family. I love my job. Don't get me wrong. It's awesome. It's fun. It's exciting. It gives to the kids. Uh, helps them to learn skills and help them to grow and develop into uh, successful teenagers and adults there there's you know there, there's not many more rewarding jobs than this but my family comes first and 
and I think extension extension realizes that um, there, there's they're kind of adjusting the the culture the extension culture um, you know because before it was you know you if there's something that needs to be done you do it you are you are the agent you're in charge you're gonna be there you're going to every trip you're going to every conference you're going to every night trip night nighttime overnight thing weekends and um, with the with the with this new generation uh, with my generation and, and Millennials that's a whole other topic I'm not a millennial I never claimed to be a millennial um, that's a topic for another day um, but with this generation, it's it's a different mindset of I will do my job, I will give to my work, but when I am off, I am off. And I like that because I can go home and um, and I can be home. Now, of course, we still have we still have problems, you know, getting on the phone and social media, not being present with the kids, but we're working on that. You know, that's that's a everybody kind of struggles with that but um, I don't have to worry as much about being gone every single weekend because when 4-H is in full swing I could be gone every weekend if if I took on that many responsibilities so but anyway that's my little rant um, and my, my words of advice Consider what matters most, because it's what matters most is where you need to put the most effort. I've always wondered what that shield is for. It's like a Viking shield. So, whatever matters most to you, that's where you put your effort. If, you, if your job matters most to you, put in more effort. Give it your all. If your family matters most to you, give it your all. Be present, especially if there's young kids. Every night when I put the kids down, I ask them, what was your favorite thing today? And sometimes, you know, sometimes when we've had a rough day, watching a movie or going to school. But sometimes when we play, every time when we play something, what was your favorite thing? It was playing with you, Daddy. So, that's what matters to me. And that's where I'm going to put my effort. Be excellent to each other. Party on. It's going to be a great day. I can feel it. I hope. I'm praying. This is Tuba Billy, signing out.